เห็นเห็นเห็นตาฝรั่งปะแต่ไม่เห็นตาฝรั่งไม่เห็นวิวจ้ะเห็นวิวเนาะวิวนะลอยอ่ะModern bustling capital. Day and night, six million souls on the move. The guidebooks call it the land of 50 million smiles, something that attracts almost 12 million tourists, or f a l o n g every year. The Thais call their capital g r u n g t a p City of Angels. The sex tourists probably agree, and the watchful eye of authority hardly cares. They say that if you can't find it in Bangkok. Then it doesn't exist. Here, every vice known to man is up for grabs, and the reason is pretty simple: lack of jobs, poverty. In Bangkok, a typical day's pay is eight dollars. In the north, two dollars. It's no wonder young girls from up country head for the bright lights and the opportunity to work. Sex sells. It always has. It blossomed during the Vietnam War. And now it thrives. The first time I traveled through Thailand, I was in awe of this paradise and its welcoming people. But somehow, in that brief glimpse, it never occurred to me to look beyond the smiles. But when I came back, wanting to film this unfamiliar world, I met Pla, a 19-year-old. Who worked in one of Bangkok's countless bars? Pla was willing to reach out and share her world with me, and in the process, changed me and touched my life in ways I never expected. This is that story. Bangkok is the best country, the best city in the world, for one reason only. <laughs> Shut up. For one reason only. The reason being is that it's a man's playground. 
The program B. It's not around there, I'm at. The program B that you can be a man in this country or you cannot. I like this. Do I look alright? Sorry. After you want me can do. Up to you is up to you. Sorry. She can make for you happy. When you take she not good, she can you can cancel, not keep money, no problem. If you want take two, you can take two. Sex tourism prostitutes in Bangkok normally work out of one of the expatriate-run bars. But on the streets, it's mostly underage girls and HIV-positive women still plying their trade. Let's be at, you know. I can't tell. Because I know she is As a Westerner on the streets of Bangkok, you get constant hassle. Not just hookers, shopkeepers, and taxis. Everything. I'd been filming along the market of Sukhumvit Road when I first met Pla. There was something about her that was different from the other girls. Not just her smile, but the life in her eyes portrayed a sweet innocence that I had not yet encountered. Since the age of 13, Plaz worked at a bar called Checkpoint Charlie in an entertainment plaza. Learning English is obviously one of the perks of the job. It's like numerous other bars owned by German, American, and English expats. There's no pretense. This bar is a pickup joint. But Pla tells me she isn't involved in that side of things. Her job, she says, is just to pour drinks. She's more than happy to talk to me, and finally I'm persuaded to pay her bar fine and let her show me the town. Hey, bar for me. Thank you. Two people for you and for me. First stop, she insists, is Benjassari Park, dedicated to the Queen of Thailand. She says she wants to show me the beauty of Bangkok, not just the night scene. But despite the smiles, I find myself constantly watching my back. In Bangkok, foreigners are constantly warned about scams, and yet Pla insists I'm safe with a Thai girl as my guide, the perfect companion. You know, yesterday I have somebody tell me about a story, story about Canada. About a long time ago, have one man, he have boat, you know, boat, and he go everywhere on ocean. You know ocean, yeah. And he long, long, long time he go, he go, he go, and he see small island. It's Canada. Before. I go to school and I work together. I have no time for pay with my friend for something else. Only work and only go to school. I started work about 13 years. In Thailand, <coughs> in Thailand, I finished school about 12 years. Everybody same. As I listened and watched, I couldn't help but reflect how Pla's innocence belied her six years experience as a Bangkok bar girl. Pepsi. And as I got to know and trust her a little more, the pieces of Pla's life slipped into place. I go everywhere. I see a Thai lady with with a phalang, walk with phalang too much, maybe get married with phalang. Oh, I know. Falang come to Thailand for lady, lady, fly lady, for butterfly. Hmm, butterfly. Falang butterfly. <laughs> Coming from comfortable Western lives, it's hard to get a grasp of a life such as Pla's. She lives only for the present, 
the future, in Buddhist eyes, this is a world of illusion. But then sometimes I have to wonder if she's being totally honest. She seems to be more familiar with the game than she's letting on. Oh, I have some, some phalanx in my body. <laughs> Maybe I, I love it. <laughs> nah, you look here again. <laughs> you know. In the evenings, Pla would point out the butterflies, an unlikely but accurate description of the men who flit from girl to girl in the different bars along the strip, hovering momentarily with one, then on to the next. Thailand's sex trade is a huge money maker, a two and a half billion dollar a year industry. Of course, most of the take goes to the various mafias operating in the country and to bribes and payoffs to the police and officials. There's been talk of legalizing the sex trade, but the girls know all this means is the government ministers will line their pockets from a profitable industry that just keeps on growing. While the music speaks of love, I watch men with their Thai girlfriends, wives, and hired companionship. The North American legal process dictates that I protect the identity of the men. I decided to afford the women the same respect, who have no legal process to protect them or hide behind. The Bangkok that I'm observing is more at ease thinking about lust. In this society, that is only the prerogative of the males. Prostitution is illegal in Thailand, for the women. Men are at liberty to pay for sex, but women can't charge for their services. Of course the entire charade is hypocritical, but it affords the police an enormous opportunity to take a cut. Sing a song. Hey, Grabana from you. Hey, Grabana. It doesn't take long in Thailand to become aware that the police are subsidizing their incomes. One night I watched at a street market when the police randomly confiscated vendor tables for whatever charge. An old man told me this wasn't unusual. It was a shakedown, pure and simple. A bribe would get their tables back. A couple of days later I would find out for myself how the system worked. A Thai police officer barged into my hotel room and because I had no official filming permits, confiscated all my equipment, including the footage I'd shot of Pla. If I wanted them back, I should report to the tourist police. Naturally, they knew all about me when I showed up to reclaim my gear. But not before I had to fork out a $230 payoff. I even began to wonder whether Plod tipped off the police. It's hard not to let paranoia become a way of life. Still playing tour guide, Pla is taking me to visit Wat Arun on the Chao Phraya River. Our cab down to the riverboat is shared by Pla's colleagues from the Checkpoint Charlie Bar. These girls are smart and never miss an opportunity for a trick. With each other's encouragement, they're touting for business all of the time. One night spent with a Falun can earn more money than Pla makes in a month behind the bar. And I have to ask myself, if Pla's being honest telling me she's not on the game like the others, how long will it be before she is?
Then I start to wonder what secret she's hiding. You know, at work or at, at uh, somewhere, I not tell mom everything. Sometimes have secret with mom. Better for her. If you tell her everything, you know. She have, I, th I know she have a few bad. Only I say, I say, I tell, I say mom, I tell mom, work bad handy. One time she said, she want to come see my work. I say, no, 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 no. <laughs> I say, no, I don't, I don't want to see. You know? Huh? Why? I don't want she see because I, I don't want she come because sometimes I talk with Falang, I sit with Falang, I have the thing with Falang, something I don't want she see. My friend at bar, broken heart many times. Because he loved a uh, man, Falang man very much. He talked, you know, he talked, uh, he said, I come back, come back, but not come back. And uh, some man, okay, come back. Yeah. Smell water. Not clean. It's okay, we don't care. Come back, okay, we take care. You know, come back, it's okay, never mind. But we remember. She not just conduct for sleep, for sleep. Oh, we should. Cat! <laughs> Cat! I think no more. Maybe something. <laughs> Sometimes I just look at Plan, shake my head at how vulnerable she seems. A smart and beautiful girl, but with what chance of a future? Good. <laughs> he have wife, but he not take care of wife. He take care of many, many ladies. And, uh, <laughs> and he have money, he not give for his wife. He not take care of daughter, he not, care, take, he not take care of son. And after his wife know, cut, cut this, cut dick. <laughs> Cut dick, put in my, in the bath, uh, no, in the toilet. <laughs> put in toilet. Mm. He can, he ha cannot have sex with wife anymore, with a lady. Good for him. <laughs> Good. <laughs> he butterfly. Good, he not die. He lucky. <laughs> new, Thai new. Claw's boss is having a party at his well-furnished apartment overlooking the Chao Praia River. A fairly normal affair. He says it's for the girls on their day off. But twelve girls and three men, with an overabundance of alcohol and drugs, hardly seem like a mere friendly get-together. For expatriates living in Thailand, there must come a point when they taste a life without boundaries and find it impossible to leave. I can only speculate that their morals must fade with time, perhaps disappearing altogether. As the girls began disappearing into the bedroom, I felt protective of Pla, and I got her a taxi home.
<laughs> so, go soy cowboy at the blow drop bar. I'll tell you what, there's a, one girl in there. Her name's Mam. Mam. She can. S I won't say it on camera, but fuck me, she can suck a knob. <laughs> Really Pla told me that I should film the night market of Papong Road packing up. It was 4 a.m. and all the go-go bars had closed. The lady boys were the only people still on the streets offering sex to staggering tourists. I have, I have, I, I don't operate. I have. What do you say? You want? Okay, well, lesbian toe. You take photo, lesbian toe. <laughs> I met Jennifer, a lady boy who has paid for her transformation from male to female with an endless string of sex tourists. I go before I go with um, Australia man and give me four thousand baht. Four thousand baht him give me already. Fuck fuck fuck. America, England, Canada, French, Australia, Austria, Germany, Sweden, Switzerland. Good, very nice person. If we give good money, we have good time. You suck your. How oh, what's your name? What's your name? A few days later I discovered that Pla was missing part of her right hand, but she had been so good at hiding it that I hadn't noticed. But when I started to ask her questions about it, she was reluctant to say anything. Tell about my tell about my Siona, Jordan. You can ask somebody but not me. My life is very bad. After I separated with that Sonia. I come back stay with mom and then go to school. Uh, mom, she spend money for for me for go to school. Only mom, no dad, because I uh, I not meet him again. Never come see me. Never come see me. You are miss everything can tell you but not I about my dad. Can or not, huh? I won't talk about him. Why? Why you know every time I talk about him I meet him so much.
I want to hold it. I don't know where he now. He vanished out of Pla's life and she's not exactly sure where he is. And her mother is constantly reminding her of how she hates him. Somehow I felt there was something she wasn't telling me. I was still intrigued about her hand and I had to ask her one further question. If I can't answer you, I can. If cannot, I cannot. Okay? Why don't you know? Did you see your hand in boiling water? Accident? No. What happened? Uh, hot water. Big, uh, what name? I don't know English. Hot. Uh, pass. Uh, I walk, walk past. And my mom, number one, she do something. Uh, I don't know what she do, but I, I remember I asked her, I, recall, I call her mom. I say, mom, what are you doing? She say, go away. But I, I not, I not say, we call a baby. I want to know, a baby. I say, mom, what are you doing? Tell me, baby, how you, baby, something. I don't know. After, she, maybe she angry. She touched my hand, put the, uh, You know? Ale. Pla spent three months in the hospital. She was adamant I shouldn't film her hand. But it had been so badly scalded that the doctors had to amputate her fingers. Her stepmother was sentenced to three years in prison, while Pla went back to stay with her birth mother in Bangkok, where just a few years later, with only basic primary education, she ended up at Checkpoint Charlie's. You know, before I say everybody, and after I have a student, I don't say. I all the time I don't talk about my hand. You ask me. <sighs> no more, no more, not cry. Bah. I tell you already, na, Jordan. Stop. You want make me cry? Only now was I beginning to realize just how tough it really was for Pla. In a country where almost the only choice for disabled people was to beg on the streets. Financially, you're on your own. I ain't, been, I ain't been asleep for two days anyway, right? This is for the camera. <laughs> that was me last night. No, it wasn't Pla. But it easily could have been. She hadn't shown up at work for two days. Her co-worker Min had been attacked by three Thai men, and I feared the same had happened to Pla. But then her friend Juan broke the news. News that I didn't want to hear, but deep down had been expecting all along. Pla had been missing from work for two days. Now her friend was telling me that she had gone off with a felung and hadn't been seen since. Perhaps naively I'd somehow hoped Pla really would be different. But then I had to ask myself where the gold watch and necklace had come from. What Pla was doing was surviving in a material age and doing what the example of thousands before her had been encouraging her to do all along. Here, good winter, good, not hot, and here not many people, quiet. No, for long here. Not a sukumit load. <laughs> Not sukumit load. Yeah, light power load. Okay, we go out. Smell the Go 
up ค่ะจุ๊บ I'm fear I don't like here you see have everything fuck you Thai Thai fuck you and this why you don't love me and what else uh huh and crazy and number you see everything I don't want work at bar. Eh, all my life, no. If I check for Charlie Finney, then I have to find a job. Maybe I start. Maybe I work in Bangkok. Maybe outside outside Bangkok. What do you want to do? Hmm. Maybe uh. From her look, it's obvious Pla can't hide the truth. She has no options. She talks about going north into the country near Chiang Mai, but the reality is she's stuck in Bangkok. Selling her body is pretty much all she can do. ไม่ได้วันนั่นเชื่อจำค่ะแค่นัดจำไม่ทอดจำจะเด็ดแค่นัดอืมสมองก็ไม่นัดทอดแค่นัดจำวินวินอ่ะเสียงเอาก็นั
have a man say hello to me and how you I only smile because I cannot speak English. <laughs> only smile and he I don't know what he said. First day right now. Okay. I can speak a little bit. Not very well but I can a bit. I know not very good. <laughs> Sometimes I talk very bad. <laughs> Sometimes I talk, 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 talk. And after I say, do you understand? He said, no. What do you say? <laughs> I was no closer to understanding this world than when I first arrived. It was as complex and intricate as it was invigorating and enticing. It will continue to thrive because of the amazing resilience of Thai women and the unending greed of foreigners, police, and officials who market the night scene like a theme park. So then, I want to say goodbye now. Tomorrow you go back home, okay? Have a nice day. Take care of yourself. When you have time, you come back to Thailand, huh? Don't forget me, my name is Pra. Shut up! This is my girlfriend. Her name is Maisie. Amazing. <laughs> She's very lovely. And I'd just like to say that Bangkok <laughs> is the bollocks! The bollocks! <laughs> Yeah, anyway, as I was saying, I came out here and it was on a blind date. <laughs> and I met this girl and I love her. She's got funny things in her hair, but I love her. And if you're making a film about Thailand... When we get married? We get married very soon. Tomorrow or tonight? Tonight. And okay, I... no problem, we go down. This guy was a customer at the bar and the girls were expected to put up with his antics. Pla's friend M had already been asked to leave for objecting to his advances. If I spoke up, I'd likely be kicked out as well, and Pla could lose her job. But it was hard to stand by and say nothing. Yet for Pla, this was her nightly reality, and she was better equipped than I was to defuse situations like this before they got out of hand. At least that is what I thought before I boarded my plane home the next day. Um, she is very beautiful. Yes. And I am very beautiful. Yes. And That's true. That day. I've been living here now for six years. And I've been teaching in an international school for five years. And I'm going to teach her, but I don't know what. <laughs> Oh my Buddha, who's that? I don't know him, but he was shot. Within a week, Pla was found dead. I was told the police report stated heart failure as the cause of death. A typical explanation to avoid costly medical examinations. The bar she worked at is closed. Her friends are scattered amongst the various red light districts. My recollections of Pla have now become the images that I captured during my visit. I may have better remembered her if I'd never turned on the camera. Pla wanted to show me the beauty of Bangkok. She did through herself and the warmth of her smile. I could tell myself that I was impervious to a bar girl's charms, but I'd be lying. Part of me envies the oblivious traveler I was years before, taking the word for lung at face value with no repercussions. Bangkok, for me, will forever hold emptiness, and the memory of Pla's smile will continue to haunt my thoughts. A smile that has a wider meaning than Western culture could ever understand. 
a smile that now, looking back, represents embarrassment, fear, anger, resignation, and pleasure. A smile those years before I had merely interpreted as happiness. Everyone have story. Me too, I have story. But uh, nobody care about me. Mm. True. It's okay, never mind. And anything else you want to know? เห็นเห็นเห็นปลาฝรั่งปะเจ้าไม่เห็นตาฝรั่งไม่เห็นวิวจ้ะเห็นวิวเนาะเห็นวิวนะลอยอ่ะเห็นเห็นเห็นเห